Okay then, so good morning everyone. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Time is 10.08 a.m. We're meeting um, to discuss our fiscal year 20 health insurance with Alliant. And I am calling this meeting to order, attending our commissioners, Duncan Brooks and Filios. Do we have any changes to the agenda? I hear of none. The one and only item is Scott Burkhart from Alliance Services, and Dave Smith is also accompanying him. They'll present our fiscal 20 health insurance options with possible action by the board. Scott, take it away. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, Scott Burkhart with Alliant, David Smith with Alliant. I'd also like to introduce our newest uh, North Idaho Alliant team member. Her name is Coco Brockhoff. Sorry, uh, Coco. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> She's formerly with uh, the Kootenai Health uh, HR uh, team, so we, we are very pleased to have Nico on board. We're going to dive right in. I think uh, it's it's great news compared to our last meeting from where we started from. So let's dive into the, the nuts and bolts of that, and we can uh, go from there. All right. So just an update first on the on the current budget performance year to date. Uh, at this point in time, uh, through eight months, we're at two hundred and ten thousand dollar deficit, which is 3.2% uh, below what was projected. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the enrollment is 3.5% difference, so that's going to be a big generator of, of that deficit difference. But the other thing you have is we still have the seasonality that we've talked about before, which is you perform work in the beginning of the year. And we're on a calendar year with you, is that correct? No, not a calendar year. You're October through September. Yeah. Well, we're running this on fiscal. Oh, you're Cash. running it on fiscal. Yeah. Okay. Benefit changes that we talk about will be factored on a calendar year. On a calendar, we'll okay. The monetary you're... aspect on your fiscal. Fair enough. Is there a power? There's a right behind you. That's it. Like, yeah. Oh, your battery. So the 3.5% difference you see there, we talk, I'll skip the seasonality because we talked about it before, but with the seasonality, you perform um, worse in the beginning of the year than you, than you finish the year. And so the 200 some thousand dollar deficit actually translates into a slight gain at the end of the year uh, if your historic patterns hold true to what they were. Um, so then we just jump to the 2020 budget. And so you see the 2019 projected, that's our starting point because that's the current year that we're in. The 2020 initial projected, that's what we had last meeting. And so I wanted to just remind everyone of, of where we were. We're looking at an 18.8% overall increase, which is a little large. Uh, and then a 4.9% increase in medical plan employees, which is going to be a part of what drives that. So now we're going to look at the revised projected. So this is with uh, a little bit more information uh, as far as time and then uh, knowledge as to what may be occurring with some of the different things in the plan. Um, no changes to the medical plan enrollment, no changes to the administrative uh, fee, which is really for the COBRA and for the consultants. Uh, where we have our first changes to administrative services, um, this is going up a little bit from where we were last time. The administrative services, this is the admin that we pay for the self fund plan, is where that really comes into play here. One of the things that we have uh, in the current contract is there's a rebate credit for our pharmacy rebates and so that reduces the admin that we would pay because we're getting that credit up front. That credit is going away because we're moving to getting the actual rebates uh, which can be a lot larger than the credit. So this looks like it's going up but we'll see a much bigger credit when we look at the claims. Uh, life, no, no change to life and LTD insurance. Um, no change to insurance premiums and fees. Uh, and then this is the medical claims. Um, and you see we've gone from 15.5 to 5.1% of an increase. There's quite a bit of change there. Um, a big part of that is, as I mentioned, the rebates, the pharmacy rebates. We're going to be getting quite a bit of money uh, back on, on the pharmacy rebates. This is a relatively new, I mean, this year, new contract. Regents has negotiated. Um, you know, so that they're getting more rebates. That hasn't historically been their focus. And so that's a big change and a big difference, and that's going to really be helpful. That by itself accounts for about half of that uh, difference. Uh, in addition, we have a slight improvement in our performance. 
um, and then we have less trend. So when I'm projecting out, I apply trend, which is a certain percent per year. But every month we get closer, that, that trend number I need to use is a little bit smaller because we're compounding it and we're compounding it over a smaller period of time. Uh, finally, I got a little bit more aggressive with the calculation. Usually my first calculation is a little more conservative. Um, the trend number that we use uh, is reflective of what we expect cost to increase by, and that reflects the entire marketplace. That's not specific to, to Kootenai County. Where I made it more specific to Kootenai County is because you're coming off of really a bad year and some high cost, if I use a normal trend for a normal group, I'm not accounting for a regression to the mean that should occur to a certain degree. You shouldn't have a normal trend on top of an already bad year. You should have a little bit lower number. And so I lowered it just slightly. Um, that made about a percent difference. And then the rest of the changes made up the rest. So there, that's, a, that's a big change there. Um, and that's going to have quite a bit of an impact to um, what we look at in the bottom line. Uh, revise the dental claims projection. Uh, you can see where that's gone. So it's actually slightly worse, but uh, not much of a change. Um, health insurance vision plans, they're still the same. And then the other miscellaneous payments, um, down by 3,000. Uh, the reason for that is next year, we don't have to pay the PCORI fees anymore. Um, so that was just kind of standardly in the calculation. Um, and we took that out. So that brings us to a 10.8% increase from the 18.8 last time. A little bit different starting point. Um, but then there's one other thing that we wanted to take into account. Um, this is basically following the historical path that Kootenai County has used for budgeting for the last I don't know, five or six years before we, before we were here. And we tried to maintain how we looked at the information so that it was consistent from time to time. Um, one of the problems with that though is when we're looking to save money, sometimes some of the places that money gets saved is on employee contributions when those change. Well, this is the total cost. This is not reflective of the cost specific to the county that the county will absorb. And we thought if we're going to try to look at different ways to save money, we need to reflect the county specific cost, not just the total cost, because otherwise it gets very confusing. And so what we decided to do is from this point on, we're going to add this in here, which is what's the amount that the employees are paying in contributions. Um, so we have the employee medical contributions and dental contributions and the vision, vision contributions to get to the net total cost to the county. Um, and so that's actually going up 11.9%. And the assumption there is that if the contributions currently don't change, if, they, if the employees pay the exact same amount today or tomorrow as they are paying today, then they're taking no increase zero to 10.8 percent and that means 11.8 percent is going to the camera question for you hey, yes. do you have uh, the same question why is the total the same why is the total the same yeah the 10963 your revised projected is that what you're referring to yes the 10 uh, yeah you're showing a 10.8 percent the initial percent. projected yeah. is 10.9 and the revised projected is 10.9 oh, yeah. yeah. and then when you take off i changed this stuff at the last minute yesterday uh, <laughs> so i think i copied that in wrong i'll get you the right number okay um this yeah, is, the, the, the 10-9 is going to be correct. Yeah, the initial one is. The 10-9 is correct on the right. On the right. Okay. Um, so I, I will get that The next. initial so, would have been more like 11 Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I need to stop changing my format. Um, <laughs> do it every time. Sorry. Um, and so then I get that total, the total net cost of the county is when we subtract out, like I said, the contributions. And so we're actually looking at 9.43 million. There's not a prior um, on that one because that hadn't been done before. So I'm just kind of showing that as a, as a reflection. Um, and so to me, that's really what your, your starting point is, is 11.9 as opposed to the 10.8, which is all better than the 18.8. So then the, the next question was, what, what were some ideas of some cost containment measures uh, that could be put into place? And that was much more important when we're looking at 18.8, and much also harder to accomplish if we're trying to get to, to certain goals. And so um, when we look at 11.9, um, and you see the 6.9 up there, I wanted to show that, so I don't want to forget about that. The 6.9% is what the increase would be if your enrollment didn't go up. If we weren't projecting a, a change in enrollment, the increase is a 6.9. So on a per unit cost basis, it's only going up 7%. 
but the cost of county is going up by 11.9 because of increased enrollment, which really drives that. And just a quick point of reference here from, from the benefit world, when we back out the growth, a 6.9% increase with no benefit changes is considered a very good renewal. Mm -hmm. So the county, from a performance standpoint, it, this is a really good starting point, even with, we know there's you know one or two really large claims going on, so 6.9 in that perspective is tremendous. So the 11.9, uh, we did basically, call, I'll call them three different options, there's really four. Um, but the way to get down to 10.3 to 9.3, and then the 5.8, and then if the 5.8 is too aggressive, need to go back up to a 20% increase. And so you're gonna wonder what those are, so we'll just jump to them. Um, Renewal option one, uh, if we make some slight changes to plan design, so the out-of-pocket maximum goes from 2750 to 3000 uh, The contributions change. Um, the employee only monthly contribution goes up by $5. Uh, the spouse portion of the monthly contribution goes up by 15 And the child or children contributions go up by $5. Now those are additives, so if I'm a full family, it's going up by more than that's going. You're going to add the different pieces up, and we'll show that later. Uh, and then also an increase to the nicotine surcharge. There hasn't been a, a uh, change that in a while. That used to be the wellness credit, uh, but that's going to be basically renamed because it's it's at this point it's just it's just nicotine. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the one that, re that results in that 10.3 percent increase, or 872 thousand dollars. We did uh, real quick. Uh, we did not, under that scenario, uh, look at changing the deductible. Okay, it's only the max out of pocket. The deductible mm -hmm. change that we could, you know, look at, going from what 600 to 700 or 800 or 1,000, it does not save that much for the county. And the perception that, that, that employees would see with that deductible, it's just not worth doing, in our opinion. Um, so that's why we only looked at the out-of-pocket in this scenario, and then just modest uh, employee contribution changes, you know, trying to, trying to accomplish small savings from a number of different places. Um, yeah, so. And 10.3, if it was net of enrollment change, would be closer to the 5.3, yeah. right? If you just subtract five from each of those, you'd be pretty close. Yeah. And all those categories are still well below the benchmarks, what the norms are, so we can, you know, confidently communicate to the employees that the benefits are still well below what the norms are, and the, and the contributions as well, so. Uh, Renewal option two uh, stands on top of option one. Uh, the only addition is a change to the pharmacy formulary. So the formulary is what dictates what drugs are preferred, what drugs are non-preferred, um, and so that drives a lot of utilization. Uh, going to a little bit tighter formulary moves a lot more drugs into the non-preferred, uh, both from the generic side and from the uh, brand side, over to non-preferred. And it favors drugs that are, you know, cost-effective. Um, you know, by cost-effective, I mean they have a relatively lower price for the same efficacy. Um, so they're still useful. They're just different competing names in the same space. Um, and they also tend to, once they've decided what drugs that they want to have in that formulary because they've, they've kind of chosen those that are most cost effective, then the rebates get negotiated harder on those specific drugs so that those can accomplish more. And so that, that drives some pretty good savings because that takes us from 10.3 to 9.3, so it's 1% by itself to the overall budget, which is fairly significant because drugs are not a huge component of the overall cost. Um, this is a direction that more and more people are going. Uh, a little bit tighter formulary. Um, this is uh, something that PPOs have started doing the last couple years uh, that is a little bit more reflective of what HMOs have done historically because HMOs tend to have a, a tighter formulary because they know that they need to, this is the number one place where a cost kind of gets out of control if the usage is poor. There will be on that some pushback um, from employees who are just, they do not want to change their medication. Um, we did confirm with regents that within each disease state, there will be uh, at least one drug in that in that formulary. There is also an appeal process um, that is medical evidence reviewed, where if a doctor says this person actually cannot take this medication, there is a way for that to get included. It takes a little work, 
okay, but there is a way. And so there will be a little noise on this, but um, um, more and more employers are going this direction to save every person that they can. Option three, uh, and this is the, you know, the goal is option one, try to get down under six. How could you possibly get under six if that was the goal? Um, and the uh, number one easiest way to do that would be if the dental plan was made to be voluntary, meaning that there's no contribution, that the rates are the rates, and that the employee wants dental, they just pay for the full rate. Um, the rates would not stay the same. I can't tell you where those would go if this option was fully explored, uh, because once you're voluntary, then you're you're not self-funded. You're you're just buying insurance from someone who decides what the rates are going to be. And usually, on a voluntary, the rates might be a little bit higher because I'm not buying it if I'm not going to use it, right? So that's to keep in mind. But that's what gets down to a 5.8 percent. Um, that that was a goal, which is closer to a 1 percent if you look at. You know, without the Roman change, um, to say, okay, that thought is fine. Maybe we can go that way with dental, but going from, you know, the employees pay thirty percent to one hundred percent is a little severe. That's option three B, which is, you know, the contributions on the dental change from thirty percent to fifty percent. That gets it down to an eight. Uh, it doesn't go as far as the other because, you know. We went from 30 to 100 on one, which is 70 percent, and this is 30 to 50, so 20 percent. So it's a, a little bit less than a third, um, but that gets down to 8 percent, which is about a three without enrollment change, uh, 670 thousand dollar increase in the budget, you know, total dollar amount. So those are those are different options. Uh, we talked about the contributions on these because um, the contribution changes were the same. So I wanted to kind of show you what that looked like. Um, because I was talking about employee and then spouse and child. This is, these are the different ratios that you have. Uh, EE is employee only. Uh, ES is employee and spouse. Employee spouse and one child. Employee spouse and two children. Employee and one child. Employee and two or more children. Um, and you see the rate history that we have um, that we were able to collect from the time we started, which was, I think, in 17. Uh, we were able to get information back to 14 there. Uh, your contributions changed slightly from 14 to 15, historically, uh, just on the dependent side. And from November 2015, they didn't change until January of 18. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of, of, of where those are. And then you see where we're going for, um, actually for January 20. Um, it's not that big of an increase in the different levels. Uh, employee goes up by $5, employee spouse goes up by 20, uh, employee and, uh, Family goes up by 25, uh, whether you're covering one or, or two children, and it goes up by 20 uh, or 10 dollars if you're covering children only. So those are the big changes, and then I'll just go back to this page. I think for the discussion, uh, because this kind of is, you know, where yeah we don't know where you are currently as to what what the target might be for the budget. Um, but that gives you some idea of what kind of measures would need to be taken to get to different levels. Dave, I have a question. Uh, take us back to the uh, chart, the most recent chart that shows the dental with the cost share. Which one? This one? Uh, yeah, this one. When you say a 50% cost share, the current is 30%, what does that mean? So, so we're all on the same page. for the contribution, so if I if the rate for dental is forty per month per month, on average your people are paying about twelve. Now that's across all tiers. Okay. So it's not the same okay. for every tier. Okay. Um, and this is saying, well, if that was the case, they're going to go from twelve to twenty. So it's a cost share on the premium, yeah, not right. on the actual procedure. Correct. Okay. okay. Fair right. enough. Right. So that we all understand that. And, and some of the value of doing. Those things and the reason that contributions are leaned on more heavily than the plan design changes in, in in the savings is the plan design changes are not as impactful anymore because a lot of your costs in the medical plans come from the large claims and plan design doesn't have too much impact on that. On contributions, the other benefit that you get is those are pre-tax. So if I change that by twenty dollars, 
the employee is not going to see the paycheck <laughs> reduced by $20. They're going to see it reduced by a little bit less than that. A little bit less than that. Right, depending on, on where their tax bracket is. In addition to that, the FICA match is an additional savings that you're grabbing from there because you're not matching the FICA on, on what they're not paying. So Understood. there's some major tax advantages to doing the contributions as opposed to doing it in the, in the plan design. What I like about the approach that you guys have taken here uh, is because I've heard people say, and I do mean people, that in the past a disproportionate share has been uh, shouldered, if you will, by individuals, by single employees. So this seems to change that dynamic a little bit where we're shifting a little bit more uh, to the family plan, and I think that probably makes good sense. Um, any thoughts? I agree. I'm going to put a stake in the ground right there. That's what I'm thinking. Let's find just ask one question. Go right ahead. Can we go back to your conversation about the medical claims and your comment about mean reversion? And oh. how you get went from fifteen percent down to five percent? Yes. Primarily because of mean reversion? No. No. Okay. That was that, that was about one percent of it. Okay. Um, so about five percent of that is the fact that the pharmacy rebates we're getting as part of the plan now. We're we they're gonna a check comes quarterly on the pharmacy rebates and so we're giving up the administrative credit which was a very typical credit by regents and they were one of the lowest it, we've been pressuring them for a couple of years about how low that credit was relative to the rebates that you see from others and so they felt the pressure and I think some of the problem was the contract that they had as far as the rebates that they were getting and so when they went back and renegotiated we're going to give it a big chunk of rebates we're giving up about forty thousand dollars in admin um, credit, but we're going to be getting what was it, Scott? Five hundred thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it like it's going to be four hundred. It, yeah. It's a it's a significant. Now, that's not that's not going to recur in the future because that's now on the base, right? So you know, but this one year, that's going to be a very helpful change in switch negotiations. Those rebates have gone up historically. They they have been going up, um, kind of in pace with pharmacy trend. Um, what is interesting about it, and this might be a future issue um, with pharmacy rebates, is they're under scrutiny for good reason. Uh, they impact the transparency of the whole system, and you have several state governments and the federal government looking into it. It's, it's amazing because in our industry, you know, I, I can't give you $50 because that's rebating, not losing my license, but you know, five hundred thousand dollars is not a big deal. Um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't fit in line with what they generally want to accomplish. In addition to that, because of the pressure, there are a lot of larger players in the marketplace that are talking about or moving to point of service rebates, um, and what those are are. So when the rebate happens right now, it's kind of in the back room. You know, I go, I buy the drug. Two months later, a check goes out with the rebate that happened from that drug. So I paid hundred dollars, there might be a forty dollar rebate associated with that, which goes back to the plan. With your plan, that's generally fine because an employee's journal not losing out because you know their copay is still less than the cost of the medication even with the rebate. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other plans that aren't like that, HSA plans. We've talked about those before that have a high deductible. And so when that employee's paying the whole portion, they're paying $100 for uh, medication and then the $40 rebate's going back to the plan. That seems kind of weird. Um, and so point of sale rebates will be rebates that occur when you purchase the medication. Um, and so the cost of, of the drug will be lower to the individual. And general will be lower if they have copay because the copay is, I guess it is less than. But that's gonna impact the marketplace. Um, and as more and more of those things happen, the rebating could change. Now, if it changes, is that gonna be a huge negative, you know, in the future to the county that we have to deal with? Um, if they go away completely, well, the cost of the medication should come down. And so, you know, we'd still be in about the same spot unless the cost of medication didn't come down by as much as the rebates were, which is what the debate's gonna be around. And so, you know, a lot of what happens with medications is going to be in the hands of, you know, I'd say state and federal governments in the next three years because there's a lot of conversation. 
Can you, can you show me 3A again? The big difference, or I think the only difference, Bill, is in the demo. Mm -hmm. But there's a big difference bottom line. Well, there is. But what happens between 30 and 100 percent in dollars? What? What is the dollar savings relative to? Well, the no, no. The, your, the savings to the county, I can see, but to the individual. I mean, it's two and a half times. The employee contributions uh, on a single employee would, would be about $30 per month on a single employee. And, and on the, the and what? Yeah, what are our rates well, well, let's say if the, if the premium rate on a fully insured plan dental is $40 per David's example, and the employee is paying about 30% of that, they're currently paying about $12, let's say, mm -hmm. on average, whereas they would be paying 40 to 45 going forward for a single employee. If and, that, and, that, rates, and that's an option. Only if they want. Here if they want down. Yeah. People who don't need it or don't want it can go or is it the actual rates. Come on. So a single employee. We lost. Go ahead. Uh, uh, one, is this on the screen? So okay. this is, a, a single employee currently pays um, five dollars, so they pay the smallest percentage overall, and the rate is thirty-two. So I imagine that a voluntary rate. Would be about thirty-five to forty dollars for a single for a single employee. Go ahead. Uh, employee and spouse, uh, they pay twenty today. Today, uh, that would probably go up to ninety ish. Mm. Wow. That's significant. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. That's well, that's the you know when we look at the the dental options um, and what they were, to be honest. I mean, I, again, not knowing the budget, option two, is it cutting too far? Um, there is a pharmacy formulary, you're, you're not really touching the dental in this situation. Uh, you're making those changes to the contributions, any low pocket maximum, uh, you're not hitting those contributions too hard. Um, if you need to save more then you have than that, I might look to add on to this instead of cleaning dental because one of the one of the goals was to get down to a six and so that's why the dental was looked at because that was really the only way to do it. Keep going. So so three B then what what option well, three is that's it. Three A. That's that's quite a bit of savings in that's quite a bit of savings yeah. to the county and it's not a, a, a huge hit it's a big yeah. to the employee. Right. And you still have a tax benefit and with uh, no, no, go ahead. For the record, um, like Dave was saying, um, there's a tax benefit to the employer to partially fund that dental mm -hmm. as well as to the employee. It's like more of a win win. Plus, like he was saying too, if the employees are completely off and they have to pay for it on their own, then those companies can just oh my God. raise those rates do what they want at to do. will. What? Yeah. You mean yeah. this one? Yeah. And, and it this this hits the benchmark. Leslie, so, thoughts? I got a question, Commissioner. The, so I want to make sure I'm understanding this. Go right ahead. Under the 3A proposal, we're uh -huh. currently, right now, or, you know, to apply to this one as well, but our current uh, dental money we're paying is five bucks right now, right? Yes. That's a single point. Point. Single yeah. So under 3A, the, the voluntary rate would go from five to 45, is that correct? Yeah. About 35 it, or 40. 35 or 40, okay. Under 3A. So, yeah. Under 3A, right? Yeah, that's the 100%. That's the 100%, Dan. Okay, under 100%. And then uh, what was the other option? On that's 3B. 3B is the So it was like 20% of $5. Okay, that's not too bad. No. So it goes from 5 to 6. Five to what? Seven fifty. Five. I'm or sorry. Seven, yeah, you're right. Five, five to seven fifty. Okay. Got you. Yeah. So that's huge, but it. it yeah. And and a good impact to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. with big impact. This is what I'm thinking, frankly. Uh, you know, I don't. Yes, Jim. Yes. Uh, Jim Brand, for the record. And Chris, I've also heard the same thing you have that we're putting a lot on the employees. Mm -hmm. But if you just look at the math here. 5% of 40 is 12.5%, but yet the next one down for the spouse is less than 10. And that's the cost of our right there. 
pretty. You're saying you're t yeah. talking in percentage terms, yeah. Jim, yeah. and that's a good point. Yeah, you're going up 10 percent on the single, and with the spouse, you're going up. What was that, Jim? What did you no, you're going up 12 and a half percent for the employee. 12 and a half percent for the employee. And okay. the spouse is, is, uh, is obviously 15 less than 10. Mm -hmm. So. Yep, I, and the spouse. The uh, so, so what do you want to do? The spouses are what the cost are the biggest relative to the rate. Right. So right. are you right. suggesting, Jim, maybe we freeze? Well, no, I was just, it, obviously it's, no, your, no, it's your decisions, but what I'm seeing here is in the past we have known that the spouses have been higher drivers of cost. Of cost. And yet we're charging a higher percentage. For the employees, for the employees. Then we so are to raise for those the spouse percentage the spouse. to the same Good point. level. Okay. Yeah. It's sixteen thousand dollars every five dollars on the spouse. That's so if we same. raise the spouse by five bucks, we save another sixteen thousand. Yep. Right. What are you, what are we doing to the single? Are we the single got, is five dollars, but that percentage wise is that yeah. The single, the five dollars generates thirty four thousand dollars of savings. Because more people are there, yeah. you know, everyone's there. Right, you have to go ten, ten ish dollars on the spouse to offset that five dollars on the employee. Is that fair? Right. Yeah, it's pretty close. And if we did that, what would that offset the down? Well, if we did that, what would that offset the down? Because in my opinion, as an employee, that's a huge hit. If you if we if you went with option A, that's that's twenty almost twenty five cents an hour. You mean on, we, the, on the dental? Yeah. For 100% dental. For 100%. Right. That's a huge, I mean, because are we going to get increases? Uh, what I'm that? hearing, I think, from, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not interested in 100% dental. Okay, so yeah. let's take that off yeah. the table. How's that? Yeah. Three of us are saying no. No. Okay. Four. <laughs> I've got to get some answered off the very first slide. The very first slide that you showed us. Could you go back to that? The very first one. I got a question about the administrative fees. The very first slide? Yeah, the very first slide. The very first showed like 36% or something. Is that the one, Dan? Yes, sir. I, I don't personally. So, no, that one right there. Okay. 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 So, uh, no, uh, it's not that one. No, there we go. Yeah. What? So in, we projected 335 in 2019, and now we're projecting when you run it all the way up of an over hundred thousand dollar increase on the admin fee what's driving that six dollars per employee is the fixed rebate cost on rx so that's 50 to 60 thousand of it right there which we're offsetting that with almost five hundred thousand with the premiums yeah. 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 so it goes up in one area it goes down you got it. Thank you. Yeah. because we're using that rebate just kind of shuffling right. the cost around well, let me get more specific. Generalities aren't good enough for David. He's going to tell you exactly. Dave, just so that we can get back on track here, um, yeah. do you want to put on, excuse me, put up option 3B again, please? Yes, I will. continue when it comes to this and you guys making your decisions Go right ahead. um i i think if you make your decision in a form like this it would be nice to see actuals so i know that i, I as far as dental goes like really what it's going to how it's going to affect each employee based on their situation meaning i know we've got a percentage here but based on actual actually what we're paying you know, as far as um, an employee contribution um, and then employee spouse, it would be nice to actually see what what we're going to be taking it, the hit. You know what I'm saying? An actual figure. Percentages are great, but none of us know off the top of our head how much. Well, we're everything actually else, is, everything <coughs> else is done as a dollar. Well, I know, but I'm saying dental. Like that's what I'm saying. Everything oh. else is done in a dollar amount. Mm -hmm. 
and the dental is at 30%. Right. What does that, what does that okay. mean? Exactly. Okay. So, right. Yeah. So 20%. And, and we can do that. The, uh, we didn't know how serious the dental conversation was going right. to be. Um, so that's that's I'll I'll, I'll, I'll take that that hit there because I, I didn't know it was gonna get so much fun. That's a that's a good you mean point. you don't have it off the top of your head? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, and, and here's the other thing: the the difference with the dental is we're we're saying roughly because the the first thought in our thinking process was okay if you just cut dental completely, that gets you down to the six percent. Now that's gonna be pretty draconian and hard to do. It is. Right. Right. But it was like that's why we put it in there. And so then the 30 to 50 percent was kind of added as an after as an afterthought. If you didn't go all the way, you went kind of somewhere close. Here's what it looked like. How that was spread, if this was an option that was going to be done, is I think something that's still viable for discussion because it can be spread in a multitude of different ways. Because right. there is employee, spouse, and children there as well, and we could do the hit very similar to how we do it in the medical. Meaning, you know, there's a certain percentage that goes on to the spouses, a certain percent goes on the children. You know, we're trying to make the, the pure dollars less. I understand the percentage conversation about what's happening here with employees. Um, we're trying to make, you know, $5 be kind of that impact. It would probably be a similar impact on, on the dental. I, I would vent, vent, venture to guess it might go from 5 to 10 um, there, and then you have a bigger impact on spouses and a smaller right. impact on children. Okay. Uh, but that that design is flexible. It's like, there's that. different ways to get from 30 to 50. You can do that and show that. Yes, right. I can do that and show that. I can, I can send over, I can make like three different ways to do it. Right, okay. so I, that you I can just kind think of see that those. would be better for us to understand. That's you right. yeah, you're right. Yeah, and before you guys make an educated decision, that affects us, it would be nice to see actual numbers, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Well, I, think yeah. you're, I think that's fair. Um, Leslie was indicating and I, I think I agree that what happens, and I want to double check this, if we raise the spouse monthly contribution from 170 to 175, did you say that was about a 16 grand savings? Yes. Yep, every five I months. like it. What mm -hmm. do you think? Mm -hmm. and, and to Jim's point earlier, it does make, it balances stuff, yeah. it a little bit better I by taking again. Shifting yeah. a little bit more of the burden onto the family. I hate to put it that way, but spouse. 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 Onto yeah. the spouse. The way, yes, the, the way private companies tend to look at this is, you know, and it's all on how you theoretical, theoretically look at the plan that you're providing. Right. Is the reason that spouses tend to get targeted first as opposed to children is number one, you say if, if your spouse isn't working or that's a choice, that's a choice that that you're making. Spouses also tend to cost quite a bit more. Children don't, and not everyone has a choice, especially if you're seeing parents out there, so they try to make that a little bit more affordable. It, cho it really depends on what your perspective is on how you want to treat the health plan as to what you choose to favor or not favor. The spouse cost uh, of 170, of 155, you know, the issues that I see with that in general are there are a lot of companies out there that charge $150 for a single employee, right? And if and the hundred and fifty dollars they charge for a single employee might be for a plan that's a twelve hundred dollar deductible plan. And so you get the situation where you might even be pulling spouses who aren't taking their plan just because the cost difference isn't that much and that's what they want to do and you don't want to necessarily be in that position. So that's another reason to kind of boost those spouses up so that you're you're not getting spouses on your plan that should generally be the responsibility of the employer or they're working in. So right. th those are the kind of perspectives of why it's, I think, a, a fine thing to do to... So I think where we're leaning here, and, and again, not, we, we're not going to, well, we could, but probably not going to make a decision right now, is uh, go with 3B with a couple changes, one being uh, Leslie's suggestion, and I think Bill and I agree, take the spouse monthly to 175, and um, to Jelena's recommendations put a dollar figure on the 50% and the 30% so people can actually yeah. see what it's going to cost yeah. them. Right. But I think that's where we're headed, guys. A couple mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Tom. Warren Keene from the record from the coroner's office. Um, speaking on health and problems, nicotine is a choice. And I think it should be higher. Oh. Do we um, oh, I'm um, sorry. A hundred dollar surcharge is a patient's choice to smoke, which then populates my office. 
<laughs> yeah, but then you get the last. But you don't, you, you don't want more business, huh? And, and what, what does that do? What does it do? It's a dollar bucket. There's a uh, seven percent oh, of yeah. so it's a small number, but it is a number. Uh, so what are we at? Fifty, I think. 50. So we're going to go from thirty-eight fifty to fifty for the nicotine. What would happen if you went to a hundred? Okay, so the. Hmm. I don't want to be a party pooper <laughs> at all on this, but if you went to a hundred dollars, it's going to be sign that the yeah. nicotine is forcing them to lie. Yeah. Well, yeah. or say that they're going to go through a tobacco cessation, cessation program, and whether or not it. they would quit using. I think that's what would happen. Yeah, it's, I think it's a Laffer cur curve principle where you get it past a certain point so and you get long. zero. Yeah, because it's going to be a That was the, that was the part of the first time, they they <laughs> But it, it basically, it's $45,000 yeah, in savings yeah. here. Assuming that people don't lie, and all of a sudden now you've gone from 10% smokers to 5% smokers. I mean, overnight. realistically, we have more than 54 people who use tobacco products right now, but we only have 54 who declare themselves to be nicotine users right now. But what is it? But how is it a detriment to us to raise it? Because even if 30 people claim it, I mean, hey, that's more revenue for us, right? I mean, no. am I wrong? No. Or is that something you just don't want to deal with? It is. Well, it happens if, if we say we stop it. And then half the people drop off. Oh, you're right. Then what, then you're right. Then you get, I wasn't going to make it. You're right. Good thought. I didn't think that side of it. Yeah, you you got you to slowly boil the fish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, David, when can you get back with us on a dollar figure on the percentage for the dental? Um, uh, this okay, yeah. 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 Steve, so yes, yeah. 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 Well, we've got to wrap up on next Thursday anyway. Yeah, don't we? Yeah. 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 Well, if, if he has, if he has numbers, if the Dana Darrow, for the record, if if David comes back with three B modified, is the board ready to go with that option? I know. Leslie? Yeah. So by Friday, you guys would be able to come forward with your decision on Friday? At the yeah, how we fund it, whether it'll be entirely, mm -hmm. you know, And which option you would want. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 3B, I think, is yes. what we're thinking. Yes, Chris, sir. we were uh, having a side conversation. I know we shouldn't have been. Sorry. But we are, Scott said we can get numbers just like we did last year. Employee, employee, spouse, employee, children, and that way you can see it. Yeah, yeah, can see yeah, it all. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Along with the house, we'll work that out. So we'll he always move. Huh? Mm -hmm. so he always has work to me. Huh? So he always has work to me. Yeah. So we'll move the it. spouse medical contribution to 175. Yes, sir. We will work out three scenarios to spread out the 50 percent dental. Yes, sir. And we will also include the cost distribution on the medical plan of employee, spouse. And so one question on the on the fifty percent dental and the three B thing, uh, the sixteen thousand that we're saving on increasing the spouse contribution by five dollars, mm -hmm. is that additional to three B or should that reduce to thirty to fifty percent? So I mean, should we take a little bit less out of dental? Is the goal to be in a dollar amount that we were at three B already, and so now we don't need to go all the way to fifty percent, or is it? No, I think what we're saying is is keep the dental at fifty percent. Go from the thirty to All right, the fifty, so and savings. the spouse from one seventy to one seventy five. Yeah, that was a clarification I wanted to make. Yeah. Are we are we okay? Public comment. <laughs> okay. Time is ten fifty two. Meeting adjourned. Good job. Thank you. Good way to make it. Nice. Still have to be.